Picture this. You have a long commute to work and just want to listen to a good podcast. But there are too many choices. Anime, film, comic books, science. What will you do? Well, never fear. We are here with all of your podcast needs. Welcome, all freaks and geeks. We are the Square Roundtable Podcast, a collective of Black nerds discussing all things anime, comics, science, and pop culture related. Please join us for our weekly podcast every Friday on squareroundtablepod.fandomlimb.com, YouTube, and wherever else you get your podcasts. Be there and be square. That was just another pointless sequel that didn't have to be made. So when we last left our heroes, Sam Raimi had just escaped from director's jail thanks to the success of Evil Dead 2, which is produced by Dino De Laurentiis. Uh, if you are a Patreon subscriber for a, just a dollar a month, you know that they doubled down and made their own superhero movie, Darkman, which uh, came out in 1990, right in the, the coattails of Batman, the Tim Burton Batman, um, and was hugely successful. So when you're winning, you don't leave the table, keep it rolling, uh, and they let it ride for Army of Darkness. So Raimi had teased a sequel to Evil Dead 2 um, in the movie where Ash would go back in time. And they wanted to make that, but it was gonna be a little expensive and a little risky. And De Laurentiis had a, a multi-picture deal with Universal. So he said, hey, you wanna go have season on this one? And they did. The problem is De Laurentiis has been very hands-off as a producer with Sam Raimi. Uh, Universal was not. It started right away. Sam Raimi wanted to call the movie Medieval Dead. Um, the studio did not like that. So he said, how, how about Evil Dead 3, Army of Darkness? And they were like, you know, we don't even really want to reference these other movies that we don't own and have anything to do with. So can you keep the references to a minimum and just have a neutral title? Which is how we ended up with Army of Darkness. It was an incredibly difficult shoot, as most Sam Raimi movies seem to be. They shot in the desert. It was 100 days. That's not counting the reshoots, which had to happen partially because uh, they had to reshoot the ending because all the test audiences hated Sam Raimi's ending, um, which we will for sure talk about later. And uh, eventually, Raimi was supposed to deliver a PG-13 movie. After several recuts, he got it down from an NC-17 to an R. Finally, the studio said, get the fuck out of here and brought in their own editors to recut the film and eventually ended up with an R rating. Uh, they this Because of the delays, it pushed the movie from a much anticipated summer release to a kind of forgotten February release. And uh, it was not as successful as everyone involved would have hoped. This is kind of regarded as a flop of the franchise, but it isn't really. Um, it was a $11 million budget. It made almost 22 million, which if we do our box office math, means that it was more or less uh, made its money back. And considering they probably didn't do a huge ad buy on it, it might've actually made a profit. Uh, but it's looked at on as the black sheep of the franchise, um, mostly in comparison to the other two movies, which were incredibly successful and slightly more critically acclaimed, but it has achieved cult status. Yeah. E uh, Army of Darkness, everyone. Great intro. <laughs> it's, a, it's a hell of a recruitment tool, you know? You got to get them into the army. Um, yeah, this is my first time seeing this movie. It really was. I mean, there are a couple of parts that I, I guess I'd seen on YouTube or whatever. Um, but not too many. Uh, it was all pretty new for me. I, I really enjoyed it. I liked it. Um, is it groovy? It was very that groovy. That is the, yeah, that's the only right answer. Yeah. I mean, how could you not like this movie? It's so fun. Yeah. It's so silly. I, I know the moment I knew when the, you know, I got pretty deep into the movie and I was like, wow, yeah, I, I think this is working for me. But the moment I really knew was when um, all the skeleton hands are coming up out of the ground and they poke him <laughs> in the eyes and then he does the classic three stooges. I'm going to put my hand in front of my nose so I can't be poked in the eyes. And two other skeleton hands come out and poke him in each eye. And then they try to, like, they put their fingers in his yep, mouth. The and fish stuff. hook him, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so joining us today is our uh, uh, returning guest, uh, a man of of many thoughts and many words hopefully uh mr paul jones 
Hey, everybody. Yeah, great to be back. Uh, last time I was here with you guys, it was for HP uh, 7 Part 2. HP 7.2, yeah. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> couldn't be happier to be here for Army of Darkness today. Um, so, you know, my relationship with this movie, I've just to tag on to what you guys were saying, I actually saw this in theaters, not having any idea what it was. I didn't even know that it was the third entry in a horror franchise just as universal had planned exactly yeah no i was their target audience and i just i went into it and i was just like what the hell am i watching because i just did not understand this asshole protagonist you know who <laughs> yeah i mean i he was doing all the stuff i would want a protagonist to do but he was being so mean to everybody i didn't understand it <laughs> and i remember going home and thinking about it and the movie just stayed in my head for several days and uh after a couple of days, I was like, I think I, I think I actually like that movie, but I'm not totally sure. And, uh, and so then I got my friend Bo to go see it with me a second time, and he hated it. But that second viewing cemented my love of this movie. <laughs> that's Despite that's your hilarious. Friend hating it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got a second opinion, and you were like, your second opinion is stupid. <laughs> yeah, I was like, no, this movie rules. <laughs> that's kind of a rare thing to like watch a movie with someone and have like the complete opposite viewing experience as them. Uh, I once I remember I went to see the movie Match Point, the uh, Woody Allen movie. Mm -hmm, I went with mm -hmm. like a, like a couple of friends. And we all went to see it, and I remember uh, after the movie we all kind of congregated, and everyone was like, "Wow, that sucked!" And I was like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> that was like, yeah, that was that was the Woody Allen comeback. Uh, yeah, I loved it. I still love that movie. I had um, the exact same experience. I, you guys have probably never seen the John Sayles movie Limbo. Um, but it's it's a really good movie. I really enjoyed it. I dragged a bunch of my friends out to the theater to see it. And there were like six or seven of us. And we walked out. And basically, as soon as we left the theater, half the group was like, oh, my God, that was so terrible, wasn't it? And the other half were like, are you out of your fucking mind? That was great. And then we like fought about it the whole ride home. I yeah. don't know. That's, How, what, that what sounds that like a stinker like? to me. And what that was... Harris is the lone holdout. Like, guys, it was good. What was that argument? <laughs> no, no, like? I wasn't. The, that was the thing. I wasn't the lone holdout. It was pretty much split down the middle. What, what was that argument like? Like, did it get did it get pretty nasty? Like, did did you see how low can you go? <laughs> <laughs> oh, not bad, not bad. Yeah, um, yeah. This movie. I know. I've I've probably mentioned this before, but this was one of my uh, high school sweetheart's favorite movies. I think she and her dad used to watch this, and she would Every quote from day. it all the no, oh, like maybe I don't know. <laughs> she would quote from it all the time. She would just be like, like I'm blind, I'm blind, and nobody would know what the fuck she was talking about. Um, and so that's the first time I saw it, and it was the first Evil Dead movie that I saw as well. So I had no basis for anything else and had basically the same reaction the first time i watched it i was like i don't know i like it's it's okay but is it great and then the, every subsequent time i've been like yeah once you like get what it is and like the tone of it which basically if you watch evil dead 2 you come into it kind of with a primer on what the tone is um but coming into it cold you kind of need to like sort of warm up to it and then you realize you know are all men from the future loudmouth braggarts Nope, just me, baby. <laughs> I Jack mean, and shit. Jack left town. Th this movie, th <laughs> I, I, I can't think of any other movies like this movie. It's so crazy. Like, the, the tone of it is insane. Like, um, it, it is kind of a horror movie, and it's kind of serious about it. And it's also kind of serious about being a sword and sandals epic. And all the actors in this movie are playing it so goddamn straight as these medieval <laughs> characters. Really and then and then Bruce Campbell's just like in a different movie playing <laughs> this, yep. this loudmouth yep. idiot off of like M. Beth Davids, you know? I mean, it's insane. <laughs> and then there's like an extended Three Stooges sequence. Like this movie is just, the, the, ignores all boundaries. I kind of I kind of yep. love that dynamic though i i really i once uh started writing a script and never got written but i i wanted to do a thing where it was like a bunch of kids like imagine like the south park kids and they get sent back in time to like medieval times and like they don't give a shit about anything that's going on they just want to get back home and that's kind of like what this is and uh it almost reminds me of like if you took john mcclain from die hard with a vengeance and sent him back in time like he would be the same thing you know like he just has a headache mm -hmm. i don't give a fuck about sword and sandals shit like just whatever you have to do get me home like fuck you whatever you're saying like i'm pretty sure he says fuck you to a bunch of people <laughs> yeah he does and and uh, but you know the thing is the difference is that john mcclain would be competent whereas 
Ash is like competent, but he's also a complete dis- like he's a well, dummy too, you know? Yeah. Like he's well, that's, both he's both great and and invincible and also completely a moron. That's what I was going to say. We were talking about what a like a loudmouth idiot he is, but also he's able to like rebuild his car into a tank. Uh, he can make <laughs> yeah. a pro- a fully functional prosthetic hand with fingers that move out of a suit of armor and like a screwdriver. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was just like a clamp. Yeah, he just like but clamped he it. But he can't remember Klaatu Verata Niktu. Right, exactly. You know? <laughs> I mean, I think the problem is he just doesn't fucking care. You know, he, like he probably yeah. could have, yeah. but he 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 probably was right. just blowing off the old guy. Doesn't he teach <laughs> them gun classic- too? Yeah, he's a classic <laughs> ugly American underachiever type, you know, character. And and it's like he leans into that so hard, which is kind of like the the you know, everything is like this mix of like John Wayne bravado and like lounge lizard sleaziness, you know? <laughs> it's such a great such a great character. You can say Give me some you, sugar, baby. Yeah, you can say what you want about him, but I I fully come out of the movie believing that he is perhaps the greatest s smart employee of all time <laughs> <laughs> like he smart. knows his shop s smart yeah he knows the marketing he knows he knows what aisle has what he's he's there ash williams home goods <laughs> housewares yes oh yeah that's right housewares <laughs> Um, uh, let's talk about, all right, there's a couple of things that have happened already. Uh, Bridget Fonda is in this movie. <laughs> For like, blink and you miss her. Yeah. yeah. We're all pretty fond of her. Uh, if we are fond what, of her, yeah. What's funny is I thought that because originally they thought that they couldn't do the entire movie in medieval times because it would be too expensive. So they had written it where they were going to do what they did in Evil Dead 2 again, where like the first half hour of the movie would be a bigger budget version of the previous movie Mm -hmm. um and i and i assumed that they had cast bridget fonda in that role because it was going to be a bigger role and then i found out that she was actually cast for reshoots um or at least i read that uh somewhere which may not be accurate but it would make more sense if it was a bigger role although i don't know what she'd done at this point so she she was probably pretty early in her career but yeah she She was just starting to pop off i feel like i had read in my research at some point um that she was just like a really big fan of the first two movies and like really just wanted to be a part of this. I heard, I thought I heard sense. I thought I heard it was like a friend of a friend thing too. Like yeah, she had yeah, some yeah. connection to someone who was involved in making it and was like, sure, I'll do it. You know, like mm-hmm. and at this point, Raimi had been kicking around Hollywood for forever, you know, with like, you know, actors and low budget people, you know, the Cohen brothers. We've talked about the Cohen brothers and how they're kind of they had like this network of random people that they were like living with you know, that went on to become famous people uh, when they first moved to Hollywood. So, um, yeah, that makes sense. So we're watching the scene where uh, Bruce Campbell, or Ash rather, has fallen into the pit. He's thrown into the pit. And we saw a guy go into the pit before him, and he like his blood just like squirts out like in a huge gush. Like what is down there like totally eviscerated him. And then when Ash goes down, it's like a creepy lady who punches him in the face. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a fist fight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Including doing like a cartoon like wind up of her fist. Yeah, <laughs> like, uh, the, this movie sugar is a cartoon. <laughs> yeah. This is a cartoon. <laughs> well, it's pr- it's proof that Ash is actually invincible because like this is the bottom line is somebody else turns into a blood geyser when they fight this woman <laughs> and he is, you know, he can go toe to toe with her. Um, yeah. which is hilarious. This is what, you know, when I was watching this, I kind of, I, I'm not going to say I panicked, but I hadn't seen this in a few years. And knowing that Matt had never seen this before, I was kind of like, you know, you had that thing of like, well, I hope everyone likes it because I love this movie, but I hadn't seen it in a while. And it's funny because oh, yes. I realized this, this is like a perfect movie, but only for like the middle part, like the, the opening is a little bit whatever, but as soon as he gets thrown into the pit, then you get this run of like from then until the, the end battle, which kind of, as Paul said, it's like kind of a very conventional sword and sandals, you know, huge battle scene. Um, but like the middle section is where it's like super creative and just interesting and weird and just bizarre. They're throwing everything at the wall and it starts with him getting thrown. In. As soon as he gets thrown into this pit, this movie starts humming and it doesn't stop until maybe the, the you know somewhere in that end fight which seems a little protracted it felt like at one point that i was just watching like a show showpiece for like a, a special effects company or something you know like they're just making scenes just to highlight what they can do and that's it's great like this movie they like you said they throw everything out there and it's just like 
it, it's awesome. It, it's one of those. We're all, we're, yep. we're all suckers for practical effects here too. So. Oh yeah. And this is like the year before uh, Terminator 2 comes out when it like changes everything, you know, <laughs> it's like all these cool practical effects. And then like a year later, they're going to be uh, outdated. Yeah, I, I love the um the wizard throwing him the chainsaw to where he can jump his hand his lack of a hand into it. That's just yeah. He catches it on his yeah. stump. Yeah, he, it's literally the first thing I think of every time I think of this movie is that shot of him jumping up and the thing clicking into place. Yeah, yeah. I Sets mean, the tone. It's it's. I remember being a kid seeing this for the first time and wanting to take the movie seriously, and then being confronted with this stuff like the ridiculous blood geyser <laughs> and the, you know, him catching the chainsaw on his stump. And I'm like, well, this is really stupid. But like, the movie seems to not care that it's stupid, and like, I'm supposed to think it's cool. It was hard yeah, to figure if the out. The movie doesn't care yeah. why she did it. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> like, that's the thing. I, I don't know. He strikes such a weird balance with this movie. They let you know exactly what the, what they're doing from minute one. You know, like there's no confusion about, oh, should I take this seriously? They're like, yeah, no, we're getting goofy early. It wasn't um, always like this. I, I love, used to work at S Mart. <laughs> let, let me <laughs> I love this. I love this moment when he's like, All right, you primitive screw heads, listen up. You see this? This is my boomstick. Yeah, that's <laughs> I think that's the all-time um, quoted line from this movie is, this is my boomstick, I'm yeah. pretty sure. <laughs> it is, oh, man. I, I mean, all, like, there's so many lines from this movie, though. I mean, how is I? What about give me some sugar, baby? I mean, that you know, I like there's so many quotable Look, lines. I, I yeah. think people say that not in reference to this movie. <laughs> no, they do. That's <laughs> yeah. true. I, I have a question for you, and I don't know if uh, this has been discussed in the previous two Evil Dead episodes you guys have done, but what do you guys think about Bruce Campbell as an actor? I like him. I think he's good. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think uh, he just never found his. Uh, and we did. We have talked about this, and it's basically the consensus is uh, he, he kind of didn't achieve his full potential. And I don't know that it was his fault. You know, it was a lot of it. I think probably this is his only leading role in a big kind of studio movie, and the studio didn't really support it in the way that it probably should have been. And it just had some. I don't. You know, I think in another world, this comes out in the summer. And is hugely successful, and I, he goes on to have a lot of different options of what he can do with his career. That's an in interesting. Do you think this movie ever could have been like a mainstream, huge success with it being so, you know, quirky and avant-garde in some ways, and having like such an asshole for a protagonist in the, the I don't early think 90s? It could have been a. I don't know if it could have been a huge mainstream success, but it definitely could do have. You mean been... with a different actor? No, no, with him, uh, but just like this movie. I like it's such a bizarre movie. I don't know. Like if, if it had come out in the summer and Universal had really thrown some ad money behind it and really promoted the hell out of it. I think it could have been I mean, I think it could have been I'm trying to think of what a good analogy would be. It would you There's know, not a lot like, of movies like this. Really. Yeah. And and most of the ones I can think of, like the one that comes to mind, and it's not a it's not a great one to one comparison, but it's very Princess Brighty in its combination of like fantasy. fantasy genre and comedy and sort of awareness of what it is. And the princess bride was another one that was not successful. Now that was another one that I don't think was really, it's a cult classic though. I love that. Movie. Very, so 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 so. but yeah, 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 exactly. Exactly. So I think maybe this is just destined to be a cult classic. I do think there's a world in which this, this is becomes oh. popular enough that Bruce Campbell gets a little more love from you know, but bigger now, filmmakers and studios. Now we all have to realize that we missed out on ever getting to see Bruce Campbell and the Columbo guy in the same movie. I, I had a weird thought watching this. Um, <laughs> well, wait, Colin just had a weird thought right now. <laughs> I'm not saying that we should delve into it or listen to it more, but I just want to point out there's a lot of weird thoughts going around. The Columbo here. guy's in Princess Bride. He's the one. Yeah, yeah. The no, no. I got it. I got it. I got it. It doesn't mean it makes sense. <laughs> right. I was Go trying. Ahead, to, I was trying to move away from Colin's uh, comment as <laughs> yeah, quickly as possible. You're right. It's best to ignore. Him. <laughs> um, as I was watching this, I found his performance like he's good in parts, but in a lot of parts, like it feels really tongue in cheek. Like like he's really in on the joke, and and thus his performance is suffering because of it. Like, does that make sense? He. Like when he says the, the cheesy like uh, you know one liners that he has like, he says them like I don't know a lot of them came out came off as like false to me like they just feel like really like overwritten or something you know like oh this line will be funny 
I'll say that. What is what is the one you said about like the shit? What does he say? He's like, oh, you, to Jack and shit, and Jack just left town. Yeah, like when he says that, it feels like he rehearsed that like fifty times <laughs> to make sure he gets it right. You know, like this one right here when he said, tells her to blow. First, you want to first you yeah. want to kill me now. You want to kiss me? Yeah, blow. Yep. Blow. You know, <laughs> interesting uh, factoid that I learned from one of. Uh, watching Bruce Campbell do a watch with of this movie where he talks over it. And I have a really good one for you guys later when we get to the castle siege. But um, a lot of these lines that he says, a lot of these crazy lines, and I don't know which, but he said that a lot of this comes from Sam Raimi on the day. Like they'll be shooting the scene and Sam Raimi will come up with some crazy ass thing for Ash to say and just be like, in the next take, do this. Um, So, yeah, you know, some of what you're seeing might be, Bruce struggling to remember what Sam Raimi told him right before he said action, you know? Yeah, but my, my <laughs> takeaway ultimately was that I feel like I liked him better in Evil Dead 1 and 2 than I did in this. And But, like, well, th- <laughs> this is a different kind of thing. Like, obviously, this is, movie is supposed to be campy, and, like, you know, that's what they're going for. But I don't know. Just, just his overall, like, I bought him more as, like, in the cabin, like, you know, screaming and, like, doing all that physical acting and stuff, like... I just I, I think I just like that a little bit better. Not that I you know yeah. I think we're forgetting think, something. He plays evil Ash as well. What about that? <laughs> yeah. No, that's a really good point because that that is kind of an interesting performance. Yeah, you know, I like that. Performance. Yeah, yeah. I'm bad Ash. I mean, You're good Ash. <laughs> I I personally think he's amazing. I feel like he got branded at the very beginning of his career as the B movie guy. And nobody ever gave him much yeah. of a chance to move beyond that. And then I think at a certain point, he kind of accepted that about himself and stopped trying to move beyond it. And just owned it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but and I think if you ever see him in interviews and stuff, he's got a good sense of humor. He's a funny guy. He's smart. He kind of gets it. And I think that's part of like, you know, just being that self-aware, he kind of knew his lane and knew that he could pull it off. Yeah. And so he just sort of leaned into that. I also think like, I totally agree with you that like, you know, in an, in another alternate world that's like really close to this one, he becomes a major star. I think also in another alternate world, really close to this one, like no one ever gets to see him. He's still great, but like he's a community theater actor or something, you know? Right. Like, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, I, well, I think to, to Matt's point, the most interesting thing for me watching these three movies, which, you know, I don't think I'd ever even seen the evil dead all the way through the first one. Um, you know, and I'd seen parts of it and then I, uh, Evil Dead 2, which I haven't seen as much as this and watching them sort of back to back to back. What I'm realizing is that there's a real evolution of both the tone and this character specifically, because in the first Evil Dead movie, um, he is very much like just bland, handsome go- college guy. And then literally the second one takes place like what is it, like eight years later they shot the second one he's a totally different dude and and they sort of have this more of an arrogant kind of overconfident character that they you know evil dead 2 is where is like the the genesis of this version of ash and also the genesis of the more slapsticky stuff and the more physical comedy and this is a movie where they sort of take both of those elements that they sort of were developing in evil dead 2 and just go full on you know, let's lean into him being a total cheese ball, you know, arrogant prick. Yeah. And let's lean into like the goofiness of the three stooges elements of evil dead too. That's just going to be like our go-to here. Something we haven't talked about yet. I'm pretty sure he was the, the thief character on the Hercules series. Is that, isn't that correct? That is correct. Yeah. He was, he was great in that. Um, you know, one thing that's interesting to think about, as long as we're speculating about alternate timelines of Bruce Campbell's career, what if the Coen brothers had gotten a hold of him in the early 90s? Because, you know, they were all friends. Like, what if he had started showing up in their movies, playing serious characters under their direction? What might we have yeah. seen out of him? You I'm know? surprised Some he didn't, honestly, because I feel like he would fit in in a Coen brothers movie. I mean, he's in Hudsucker yeah, Proxy in like yeah, a really say, small he's part. He's in Hudsucker yeah. Proxy. You know, yeah, like you like what if what if he gets the role in Raising Arizona instead of Nicolas Cage? What does that do for him? Yeah. Or what if, like you said, what if he's in Miller's Crossing in a in a serious role and people are like, oh yeah, you can kind of do that. You know, the, part of the problem is here's my here's my one thing about you know uh, Bruce Campbell as a serious actor. I feel like because of his face and his jawline and his voice, it's almost like. He makes people Even too horny. Was, 
No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> but I, I think that it, it it might be like a thing where even if even if he was delivering a line very seriously, I think there would be like this feeling of, you know, like over seriousness, like a Charlton Hestonness about him that kind of doesn't work post Charlton Heston, you know? It may it may, um, it may be. It, I mean, well, okay, so what about did you see Bubba Hotep? Yes. Yeah. Cause, you know, I mean I it's a kind of a ridiculous B movie, but he had, it's a very grounded performance, actually. He turns in a pretty serious performance as Elvis in that movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's a good you know, one. honestly, if you look at his um, what was the t TV show, uh, the spy one that he does, like uh, Burn you know, Yeah, and honestly, he's phoning it in most of the time. There, you can kind of tell he is. <laughs> but every once in a while, there'd be you know, I watched the first couple of seasons of that, and I was always very impressed with his ability to like be a serious actor, not playing a goofy part in a in a you know some somewhat serious show you know i really like the amish sequel churn notice that was pretty good wow that is a oh we were talking about coen brothers we could see him in uh my you know we know that one of my favorite coen brothers is burn after reading i could see him in the george clooney part of that one. Oh yeah i like the oh, <laughs> what is it the mormon no not the Mor what did you just say the uh, <laughs> pennsylvania where are they what are they called the amish amish yeah. Yeah. i amish like paradise. i like the amish sequel to that churn after reading <laughs> churn after reading <laughs> i'm glad you i'm glad you made sure to say that <laughs> mormon <laughs> mormon <laughs> um hey should we summarize the plot wait have you ever seen oh, yeah. witness Who's with a uh, witness yeah uh harrison ford mhm mm yeah yeah, that's a good Amish movie. That was your thought? Have you ever seen Witness with Harrison Ford? <laughs> Speaking of Amish. Is that movie good, though? Is it? It's I mean, probably my f my favorite Amish uh, mystery movie. I thought you were about to say uh, I thought you no. were about to say it was your favorite Harrison Ford. And I was like, <laughs> no fucking way. I mean, imagine, that would be a hot take. <laughs> imagine if uh, if Bruce Campbell had played the detective in that movie. Oh, you know, God. who knows what that could have been like. You know? the, I mean, everyone knows the best Amish movie is Kingpin, so everyone can just shut up about it. <laughs> That is true. I said Amish mystery movie. Yes, that's true. Well, there's some Fair. mystery in Kingpin. <laughs> Why is this movie so funny? Yeah. <laughs> what did he do to get his rent paid? <laughs> Ew. <laughs> he really jarred something loose. <laughs> oh, God. That's All so right. gross. Uh, uh, who's summarizing these plots? I think it's Colin. Oh, it is? Oh, yeah. It has been, right? I guess. Yeah, he's I had forgot. pretty easy ones so far. Yeah. Okay. The Army of Darkness. What, tell me when to begin. Uh, you may begin. Oh, wait. We need a timer, don't we? Mm -hmm. uh, Look at me. I'm remote. Inside. Um, oh, whoops. Stopwatch. Okay. Ready? On your mark. Get set. Go. <laughs> Ah, the Army of Darkness begins with Ash recounting um, his journey to getting into the Dark Ages. Uh, he figures it's around 1300, best as he can figure. And uh, he says he used to have a normal life. He worked at the S-Mart, and then he went to a cabin. And, you know, the events of uh, the, um, the other movies happened. So, um, yeah, Evil Dead 2 happened, and then he got warped into the past, and he's in medieval, medieval times. He gets taken prisoner. They throw him into a pit. He starts fighting evil, you know, creatures, and the wizard gives him his chainsaw, so he cuts cuts it up. He gets out of the pit. He starts, you know, getting bossy, and they're like, "Oh, this guy's, this guy's maybe the, you know, the the one that was prophecy." So he starts uh, preparing to battle the um, the evil dead and get the Necronomicon back because the book can send him back to his time, and the people of the castle also need it. So he um, he goes out there. He's looking for the book. A bunch of weird shit starts happening. Like he turns into like an evil version of himself. There's little Gulliver Travels guys of himself that go after him. Um, he finds the book. He says the incantation to get the book wrong. He raises an army of the dead and he runs back to the castle and he's like, "Send me back." And they're like, "No, you did it wrong. You have to help us fight the army of the dead." Eventually, he decides to do the right thing. And they have a big old battle where, you know, they just fight the army of the dead. And they win, and they send him back. And then the evil dead come back to Esmart, and he kills one of them. And that's the end. Did 
miss anything? All right, so I think we're taking a little break right here because Harris got kicked off, and this thing's going to end in two minutes anyway. Let's just mark the time code here. 31. Should I pause this? Uh, sure. We're 31 minutes in. <clears throat> I just had to tell myself. Resume me, he says. Can't just use the same link. Use That might not work. Yeah, I think you might have to start a new one. If really? That one, yeah, if that one expired. It didn't expire. I mean, he got booted. It's a, It says we have one minute and 30 seconds left. But I'll send him a new one anyway. All right, so end meeting for all. No. Oh, new meeting. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, it only gives you I guess 30 minutes. <sighs> Welcome back. How did the rest of the summary go? That sucked. Um <laughs> <laughs> it ended up, it ended up going 5 minutes. <laughs> now, were you booted because of the internet connection, or did it tell you? No, the time time was up. Oh, that's weird. Because on our end, it said we still had some more time. But only like a minute. So yeah. Whatever. Um. Okay. Cool. So we're gonna we have to reclap again. We'll do. Th- let's just do that real fast. All right. Ready. One, two, three. One, two, three. All right. And we're gonna pick it up as if Colin just finished uh, the summary. Yes. All right. So why don't you just like say like the last bit of it? The end. <laughs> and that's how the movie Army of Darkness completes. All right, you did it. That was less than two minutes. It was. <laughs> it was. <laughs> <laughs> it absolutely was. Yeah, I mean, like for me, this movie is its own it's like it's weird for me that this is part of the Evil Dead. It's like so different. I mean, granted, this movie is R-rated, and they obviously use a lot of the same effects that they, you know, mastered in the last two movies. Um, But there's not as much gore, like not nearly as much gore. I was kind of expecting, you know, especially with the blood geyser in the beginning, I was expecting a lot more um, eviscerations and, like, uh, amputations and blood squirting and stuff, and there's really not a whole lot of that. The R-rated really comes from, like, his foul mouth. Yeah. (laughs) I, I got well, this. that's pr- I mean, that's probably because they did cut it down by like t- at least 12 minutes before it even got to the studio version of the cut, which, you know, was, uh, I you think know, was pro- probably significantly more. So I don't know. I, my experience of this movie is always like it's just winning me over as I'm watching it. So I feel like in the beginning of the movie, you're like, how could this possibly come from Evil Dead 1 and Evil Dead 2? And by the end of the movie, you're like, this is the only way to complete the story of Evil Dead 1 and Evil Dead 2. You know, like, just because, I don't know, it just wins you over, I think. It's just, I mean, on a conceptual level, it's just so out of the box to go from a Cabin in the Woods horror franchise to medieval, like, swords and sorcery (laughs) adventure. And do you know what he wanted the next one to be if he was able to make a a fourth Evil Dead movie? It still could happen. We should talk about that because (laughs) that that has to do with the... uh, the the ending that everyone hated. Okay, so you do. Okay, so we'll wait till we get to the end to talk about that. No, let's let's talk about it now. Oh, sure. Like, yeah. Kind of, well, and it's kind of it's also spoiler warnings for Ash versus the Evil Dead. I don't know if you watched the show, but uh, it ends in the same place, which is he wanted to make another movie about Ash in the future fighting like evil robot deadites or something. Oh yeah. No, no, fight, yes. no use using a robot army to fight evil deadites is what I heard. Okay. Cool. Saying, yeah. He wakes up in a post-apocalyptic future and has to raise an army of robots to fight the Deadites in the future. God, I want to see that movie. 
Oh, and I bet like yeah. If it if it had gotten made in the right time, the robots you know could have looked a lot like Johnny Five and the robot from Rocky Four and oh, <laughs> yeah, man. exactly. The well, tra- so <laughs> tractor robots. Yeah. So you know, again, spoiler warnings. But the last scene of Ash vs. the Evil Dead. St- stop me if you, you did. You guys see it? No. The, the show. I always wanted to watch I, it. I, but. I did. It's good. Yeah, it, it is. You it's should, great. You it, should watch it. Yeah, it's it, a fun show. It's awesome. But well, if you're gonna watch it, I don't know if I should give away the the, the end of the show. Yeah, I want fine. you to. Yeah, Spo- spoil it. Yeah, he he gets he winds up in the future, and it it, it sets up that ending. Like, and uh, it reveals that these robots are extremely hot. It's a really hot girl robot, and then the, and she's like souped up his car, so now it's a futuristic Mad Max style like death wagon, and he's like roaring out of the garage to go fight deadites, you know, as part of some robot underground army. Makes absolute sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but but the, but the the whole idea, I mean, what an insanely genius idea for Sam Raimi in the eighties and nineties to have to go from like fighting demons in a cabin in the wood to like all the. All these different crazy, like, time-hopping adventures, you know? Yeah. I well, love- I think, you know, and this was a big part of Sam Raimi's impetus for making this was his love of the, you know, Jason and the Argonauts and, like, the the old, um, uh, you know, sort of sword and sandal, but also the special effects of those old movies, um, like the claymation style or stop-action style special effects. He just wanted to make that, you know, it wasn't so much about like the plot. It was he has an idea of like and, you know, a thing that he wants to do. And then he lets that sort of guide, you know, what the story is, which is a little backwards. But also that's what works for him. Right. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. It's I think uh, I think any story can be like taken into the story you actually want to tell, you know. Like I, yeah. I, I stepped on a bug today, but then you can make it about like, well, actually, that bug was the leader of its civilization or whatever, you know. <laughs> is that is that true? You bastard! <laughs> <laughs> you son of a bitch, Colin! You I can't believe you destroyed that! Me. I can't believe you destroyed that leader. You know, I feel like a lot of this, a lot of this movie, comes like, honestly, if we're talking about like, what is what are the most memorable moments from Evil Dead Two? And and for me, it's two scenes. It's the one where he's freaking out and all like the deer is talking and the whole house is coming alive. And the second one is where he's fighting his fucking hand in the kitchen. Yeah, when he, that, when he chops his own hand off. Yeah. When I think of the Evil Dead 2, that's what I think of. And if you think about those scenes, this doesn't seem like such a stretch. This is kind of like with all the mini ashes and him fighting his evil self. And like all the kind of slapstick physical comedy and over the top like ridiculousness, that kind of follows from some of those elements. So it's like I get how this is a departure, but I also get how this is like a direct descendant of that. You know, like it kind of, in a way, it's insane and doesn't make any sense. But in another way, it makes perfect fucking sense. You know, the only how could it be anything else? Yeah, exactly. Um. Yeah. What's uh? What's up with Evil Ash being into like? Is that Irish dancing? What? Are, what's going on there? Is that <laughs> the whole jig? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I love just the fact that like Evil Ash is doing like his thing where he's punching him in the face and he just shotguns him right in the mouth. Yeah. And I the, really and like the shotgun the, um, pellets show up in all the future. You know. Yeah. Whenever, n- no matter how degraded his face gets, that's like the staple is his chin is covered in shotgun pellets. That's what I really like that makeup effect. Even though, like, I'm pretty yeah. sure a shotgun at that range would just like take a a good portion of his head clean off. But whatever. <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends on what kind of shot. Maybe it's bird shot. Yeah, yeah, true, true, true. Or that salt stuff, like um, in Kill Bill. I I also I don't know where you guys are in the movie, but I, I'm at the part where he's in the books, where he's choosing the book. Uh-huh. I think we were like five minutes before that. We paused it uh, when. Oh, that's, we did. Yeah, that we definitely did it. not have technical difficulties of any kind. Yeah, he's he's burying uh, he's he's burying evil ash right now. Yeah. Uh. Oh, right. Yeah. Well, yeah. The book scenes are also, I think, really funny because it's basically just, hey, what's an excuse to make like a fake book that bites him? What's an excuse to make like an elongated Bruce Campbell face? You know, like it's like silly, but it's also really creative and interesting. It's awesome. And it's yeah, yeah it's fun. It's it's really good. The elongated and all face. for eleven million dollars. Yeah, the elongated face part really reminds me of uh, Beetlejuice. I don't know. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, the same kind of look. One of my favorite moments in Beetlejuice too. Yeah, 
That this whole sec that whole sequence, like him having the eye on his shoulder and then like his face getting elongated, all that body horror stuff, I had a hard time with when I was a kid and I first saw this. Oh, actually, that reminds me. You guys want to hear a funny story? The yes. So a- so after I saw this when I was a kid, I was into it and I started talking about it with my little homies at the middle school, and I found out it was part of a franchise. And at the time, I was known as a movie guy around my school because I used to write movie reviews for the local newspaper there in Anchorage, Alaska. And so my math teacher let me pick the movie that our class would watch at our end of semester like class party with no oversight she was just like bring a movie <laughs> paul you're the movie guy and i was Dangerous. like i was like okay so i got evil dead 2 which i'd never seen Aww. so my first time watching evil dead 2 was with my math class in eighth grade and let me tell you that may be the most fun i've ever had watching a movie <laughs> the teacher like just let it fly she yeah i went to an alternative school so she was really uncomfortable with it but it was like everybody was having way too much fun and so she knew that she'd face mutiny if she turned it off um, so she just kind of <laughs> pretended not to notice or whatever. Love, it was amazing. I love that awesome. part of the story. She was very yeah. uncomfortable with it, but she was <laughs> she was in too deep. Yeah. She was she was sweating. Yeah, yeah you could tell. <laughs> she was worried. She, she had committed I went, already. <laughs> I went to a regular old public high school where shit like that was not accepted. But in one of my English classes, we had to do projects, and one of the projects was like movie related, and we had to like have everyone you know watch a movie as part of the project and i picked a racer head and it didn't it did not go over well <laughs> wow that's um, funny i have a similar story uh i think i was in first grade and the teacher like really liked me or like i was really like the the ham of the class you know like the class clown if you will and uh i remember it was like some kind of show and tell or whatever and like the thing that i brought was a, a godzilla movie and she like brought the TV in and like <laughs> let the ki- we all watched a Godzilla movie because of me. I remember that one of the old school ones. Yeah, yeah like uh, Godzilla vs Mothra or like you know or uh, what's the other one? Yeah, Mothra. I mean, there's like forty of them. There, yeah. There's so many. <laughs> oh, my it's God. funny because I can kind of like knowing your daughter, I can kind of be like. Oh yeah, if Maya brought in a Godzilla movie, she could probably the teacher would probably be like, oh yeah, let's just watch Maya's movie. Yeah, no, exactly. Same same energy. Uh, this makes me think of a story, but I don't know if I want to tell it. Do it. Uh, when I was in high school, um, we used to we didn't have off campus lunch, but my house was close enough to the school to like sneak out of uh, high school. And uh, there was this kid uh, named uh, Casey, and he um, did he have a sunshine band? No, uh, Casey had a sunshine <laughs> no, band. no. His name was Casey Shaw, which was funny because. We were not related. I just want to point out that I just made a Colin style joke that I thought was pretty funny, but like you did not. And, f- and I fell right <laughs> on his face, which is, <laughs> hey, that's proof that it was truly a Colin style joke. <laughs> that's I, true. I almost lost my train of thought, but <laughs> that's the, the typically what they yeah. do. Okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, this all checks out. <laughs> yeah. So we're talking nice about. Nice job, Matt. You nailed it. <laughs> we used to, so we used to like in this like 30 minute time period, we, w- we would watch parts of movies that I would have already had on dvd or whatever so we still watch like the the um the speech from braveheart a oh lot. hell yeah i had right. that memorized at one point and uh and casey was like y'all watching flicks over there <laughs> we were like <laughs> and we we're like yeah but what we didn't understand was that like he wasn't saying flicks as a slang term for like movies he was using flicks as a slang term for porn <laughs> <laughs> he and thought you guys were all <laughs> gathering together to watch porn together yeah and we, he ended up coming with us <laughs> and his disappointment with like, what we had to offer was <laughs> he was like was, i can't i can't jack to this yeah so we dug around and found a breast exam video <laughs> <laughs> Wait, and we were like, wait. here, here, Casey, it's a tit. <laughs> it was like, oh, well, thank God. <laughs> wait, you dug around yeah. and found a breast exam video. <laughs> yeah. Did it show nipples? Yeah. Wow. Wait, yeah. what was your library that you were digging around in? Just, <laughs> just, you never seen a breast exam video? I've never owned one. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, then you don't care about your health. <laughs> yeah, you got to stay on top of that shit, Harris. Yeah. Oh my god. 
I don't even know where to go from here. All right. Well, there we go. <laughs> he was so disappointed. And the consolation being a breast <laughs> exam video was just so classic. Because <laughs> he watched hilarious. it and he enjoyed it. That is we hilarious. Did, I still I have so many questions about why you had a breast exam video in your possession that you were like, I, oh, we were going to watch Braveheart, but I guess we could watch this. I'm not 100% <laughs> sure, but, you know, cancer prevention is important. It Early is, detection it is. is the best protection. It really is. It really is. Yeah, this movie is wonderful. I love this Merlin, Merlin type character. Oh yeah, he's. Uh, I know I recognize that actor from something else, but I'm I'm never gonna figure out what it is. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about our cast. Uh, yeah, we have. We're looking at the people. the girl. Uh, what's the her leading name? lady, M. Beth Davids. M. Beth Davids. A one, a wonderful actress who would go on to be in Schindler's List shortly after here, this. Here's here's my thing. I'm pretty convinced that Steven Spielberg must be a Sam Raimi fan because he saw Darkman and he was like. That's my Oscar Schindler, the big Scotsman. That's who I want. Dude, it's that's perfect. That's my Oscar Schindler. And then he saw this movie and he was like, hey, that shrieking banshee in medieval times would be a perfect, uh, you know, Rafe Fiennes concubine. Oh, is that who she uh, is? I was trying to remember yeah, who she yeah, was. Yeah, she's, she's the Rafe Fiennes. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I was going to say girlfriend, but it's definitely not girlfriend. It's not an accurate depiction of <laughs> that <laughs> relationship. Maybe at this time, Steven Spielberg, like, wasn't really, didn't, wasn't that active in the casting process and really needed someone to, um, to find people or something. I don't know. And he just, he called his buddy Sam Raimi. He's yeah. like, hey, have you worked with any good actors or actresses lately? <laughs> no, I think you were um, onto something. I think he's a fan. I bet Spielberg yeah. was watching Army of Darkness and just, you know, laughing his ass off. And he's like, hey. It's, it, yeah. Yeah. It, that's not far-fetched. That's not far-fetched. But, but that's yeah, no, I mean. Like and Beth Davids is such a funny casting choice for this movie because she's so good and like so committed to the emotional life of her character in this fucking movie, you know. I I, uh, <laughs> I forgot. I think I looked away. How does how does he get the evil back out of her? You know when they put the evil in her so that she marches with the army of the dead, but then he he like he swings her back to the good. How, how does he do he, it again? He does. He just he, kicks her ass. He, he just throws her, beats her? Yeah. He I thought there was more over to it than that. I looked away, and yeah. I, I'm kind of dis- that's that's my biggest di- disappointment with the movie. I I, I think we could have had a romantic moment there. Yeah, no, he he fights her, and I think yeah, he like blows her off the wall or something, and then after the battle, she's just back. Oh. Isn't that how? That's pretty much how it works, I think. Right? Yeah, no, that's definitely oh, how like it works with, yeah. with real evil. And- well, no, he he kills <laughs> evil Sheila. Like he kills evil Sheila yeah. during the oh, battle. Yeah, I think she was it's a clone? the part where she. She says, you found me beautiful once. And he, and he says, honey, you got real ugly. And then he throws her over the wall. And then we never see her again. And then she's <laughs> healed uh, oh. later on. After the battle. Yeah, apparently. I, I guess. Explanation. Probably. Okay, so we can. But we can. We can deduce what happened here. It's because she was possessed by a deadite. The fall from the wall didn't kill her. Mm. Um, and then. And then he. You know, they won the battle and drove the evil from the land. Mm. And that included the deadite that was possessing Sheila. Of course. Um, right. And so that's why she just came back as herself. You know? I would love to see There's, another scene there. I, maybe that's in the director's cut. It could be. It's so convoluted. But, I mean, you know, she wasn't... If they didn't kill her, they kind of just possessed her. They didn't actually kill her. Right. And, you know, like, they're, they're, that brings up the question of what is evil Ash, actually, you know? Because we had the... I love the scene where the little mini Ashes are fighting Ash, and he's, like, stomping on them. And I think it's, like, so, like, a, as a practical effects moment, or like a whatever it is, not ex- not entirely practical, but like old yeah, they school didn't shrink effects him. moment. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> this moment well, we're watching right now is my favorite of the whole movie. When he's asking him, "Did you say the words? Did you say the correct words?" And he's like, <laughs> "Yes, of course I did." It's like like his, not every syllable. But. <laughs> yeah, yeah. His performance is great. That's I I thought yeah. he was really good here. Yeah, <laughs> he's like like get off my case, man. Yeah, <laughs> come on, yeah. I'm not an idiot. Yeah, I, got I know it. your I words. I love when he says much. that. Yeah, yeah, I know your words. <laughs> oh my god! You guys know where those words are from, right? The day the earth stood still. Yeah. Oh. They were Although also everyone. Everyone says it. Everyone says varatu instead of baratu in this. Yeah, it's supposed right. to be barata, I think. Um, yeah. Well, and actually, not only that, but in in another reference to the day the earth stood still, three of the. Alien guys on Jabba's sail barge are named Klaatu, Barada, and Nikto. 
Oh, really? Yeah, you can peep the action figures. I don't like that they say Barada. I think that's cheesy. Well, (laughs) yeah, Baratu, I guess, sounds good. Wow, deep cut pun. For all the only the real cheese heads are going to get that one. <laughs> totally went over my head at first. I'm embarrassed. Uh, yeah. Nice yeah, I didn't, didn't want to call it. That, didn't... that might be that's a Hall of Famer when they when they put together your highlight reel, which they won't. <laughs> which they uh, that's going to be for Will. Well, I mean that one was actually pretty good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was solid. Pretty Gouda. Yeah, I'm, I'm standing out here on a, all no, all by my provolone self. <laughs> Now we're right back to normal. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's, it's, it's over. <laughs> uh, all right, let's do some top four. Um, I'm going to do it. If that cheese joke was a basketball shot, it would be a Swiss. Wow. <laughs> I'm going to do it because, because I'm remote, and so I'm going to do some top four. You guys all know the rules, I assume. Yeah, who are you going to do uh, it for? Uh, we are going to do it for one Miss Bridget Fonda. I knew it. Mm. Guest goes first. So, Paul, what name one movie that IMDb thinks Bridget Fonda is known for? La Femme Nikita. I'm going to give you a chance to revise that. Uh, Oh, fuck. Was that not what it's called? It's uh, it's it's a remake of that. No, but yeah, it was called something else. Am I right? I forgot what the I forgot what the title. You, can I say uh, it? If you can, it's, but you get the points. It's wait, called... wait, no, don't don't say it. Then he gets the points if he says it. Yeah, he gets the points. Well, if after he says I it. told him the movie was you in the top four. You gotta come up with a name. You gotta know the name of the movie. Okay, c- c- well, fuck. Oh, this okay. Um, <laughs> I can picture the 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 poster. She's like looking over her shoulder. She and... got a big ass gun. Yeah, yeah, nice. she's got a big gun. I mean, that movie was sick. Actually, I really liked that movie. It was, was a good a movie. It, is good. it was a good. Movie. I need to see that I again. I honestly like it just as much as La Femme Nikita. It's a very good movie. Oh God, what what the hell was it called? Uh, well, there's no going back now, so... I don't think... Okay, I'm not going to waste everybody's time. I don't think I'm going to get no, it. Yeah, yeah, and there's no going back. So, Matt, I guess you got to take it over. It's uh, the point of no return. Ah, <laughs> yeah, that's that's right. correct. The point of no return is correct. Does does that have the Kansas song in it? That movie? You know the Kansas song? How long? How long? <laughs> I was going to make fun of you for talking about some Kansas song that no nobody return. knows. But uh, then you did the Kansas impression. Yeah. <laughs> uh, totally redeemed yourself. Nice job, Colin. Colin, do you have a guess for Bridget Fonda? I don't think I do. Uh, so Lifim Nikita was wrong. Uh, oh, oh, I know. Army of Darkness. That is a terrible guess, and it is also wrong. Wrong. <laughs> oh, too bad. Um, all right, it's my turn. No, you already got one. You got oh, one okay. in the return. Back you to Paul. Second. I'm trying to yeah, steal we're back to Paul. Fuck, I don't even remember. What other movies was Bridget Fonda... She's a famous American actress. Oh, uh, what about um, uh, uh, Down and Out in Beverly Hills? Was she in that? <laughs> I, I don't know, and no. Oh, fuck. I don't <laughs> think she was. Definitely, definitely wrong. Yeah, and no, I don't think she was in that movie. I used to be so in love with her. I can't believe I'm doing so bad at this. I'm yeah. going to guess Jackie Brown. I knew you were going to guess that. It's a great guess, and it is wrong. No! Oh. I you know. Sorry, dude. Uh, Happy Gilmore. <laughs> Uh, no, no, <laughs> very much no. <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot there's boobs in this movie. This what the hell? Bite. Um, oh, what? Oh, there were just boobs across yeah. the screen. You did not see that. That's one of the skeletons girls. are taking slaves. Yeah, they, they, yeah, they've captured some slave girls. You know, they're an army yeah. of darkness and not just the, reanimated skeleton darkness, but like sexual, you know, but predation. most of them only have a hip bone down there. I know. If you're trying to cut some R rating out of this. <laughs> That would probably be a good place to start. Yeah. Um, uh, back to you, Paul. Uh, this is another movie that she's probably not in, uh, but I'm going to say Mystic Pizza. Uh, I don't think she's in that. Yeah, I didn't think so. Wrong. It is, it's a combo of bo- both being something that she's not in and also not being right. I, I've seen Mystic Pizza a couple <laughs> times, but like it's really hard for me to remember the actual plot. But I kind of like it. it. Anything with pizza in the title, you know? Yeah, there need to be more movies with the word pizza in the title. We had pizza licorice pizza. Yeah. 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 Mystic yeah. pizza. And what else is there? That's it. It's maybe some um, Ninja Turtle. We need, to, we need uh, to march Matt. down to one of these studios and give them a pizza our mind. Matt, you've had two good Bridget Fonda guesses. Do you have another? 
I know that she is in stuff from that era, the early 90s. She was, was in so many movies. Was her, her era. Um, I am blanking on what else she's in. Um, hmm. Can we can we get a hint at this point? I feel like that's unfair to Paul because it really, sh- if we were going to start a hint round, we should have started it with him. Fuck yeah. The hint round is not fair. There's no fairness. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. I'm going to throw out a movie. Um, I'm going to say, uh, oh, God, what's that movie called? Uh, 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 single White Female. Yes, you nailed it. Holy nice job, shit. Man. That is correct. <laughs> I did not think that was yeah. going to be right. Bridget Fonda and Jennifer Jason Lee. Yes. Um, um, also a pretty good movie, as I remember. I probably haven't seen the movie in 30 years, but it is a pretty good movie. Um, Colin, do you have a guess? Uh, Doc Hollywood. <laughs> you know, she actually is, she is in, in Doc Hollywood. That's she's the Woody guess, Harrelson's girlfriend? It is not right, oh, but okay. that is correct. She, Yeah, she's in Doc uh, Hollywood, and that is a great guess. I'm really impressed. Nice job, Colin. I'm, I'm really impressed with with your guest there i'm sorry i didn't get you any points Wrong. all right um, i won the so moral hint, battle hint round hint round hint round um we have, all right we have there two, are two left there are two movies left that came out in 1998 and 1999 one is a sam raimi movie the other is a creature feature oh i think i know both paul you got a guess 98 and 99. Uh, Lake Placid? That's it. Yes. That is done. correct. Oh, my God. I am impressed. <sighs> I redeemed Remarkable. myself a little bit. Yeah. No, that's very good. Very good. All right. It's on We've me now? A Sam, a Sam Raimi movie left. Okay. Oh, is it a simple plan? It is a simple that plan. That is nice. correct. Job, nice. We did it. Sweet. She had a pretty you good, uh, pretty good uh, selection there. Yeah, it's a solid top four. Now, wh- whatever happened to her? Has she done anything since A Simple Plan? I don't know. I feel like she probably got married and had some kids, and like she's married to Danny Elf. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. Oh shit! Huh. I I love that a basic high school chemistry book is how he does all of this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he's got it in his trunk for some reason. Yeah, yeah. And here he is. Like you <laughs> said, you mentioned earlier, Colin. It kind of got lost in the sauce, but yeah, synthesizing gunpowder. Yeah. yeah, I actually love that little <laughs> like plot device that like oh yeah, his car is there, and like they open the trunk, and there's just like a supply of you know like useful items. Yeah, everything yeah. you need to arm a medieval army with futuristic technology. Um, yeah, we could have we could have had a book him... on like steam engine technology too in his trunk. Yeah, we could have had a had him have Necronomicon two in the trunk, and then we could have ended the <laughs> movie right there. I love this shot. You can like see it <laughs> yeah. shaking. You see that. Um, I, I should also point out that you briefly kind of mentioned in your intro that an alternate title that they considered for this movie was Medieval Dead, which is a way better title. Like, that's... Uh, you think so? I feel like that's a Colin title. Oh, come on. It's, e- it's Evil Dead better. 1, Evil Dead 2, <laughs> Medieval Dead. It's pretty solid. Yeah. That would be a sick trilogy right there, but that's mm. why they didn't do it, because they didn't want to associate it with the other movies, right? Yeah, I guess, you know, I, I don't know if I'm 100% convinced that Medieval Dead is, it's like one of those things that seems really clever at first, and the more I think about it, I'm like, eh, I don't know. Um, I will say this, though. You you might be right. Maybe Medieval Dead was a brilliant idea. The uh, Let's talk about the ending scene of this movie and how they reshot the ending, because... Uh, I am totally with the studio on this one. Not that I, not that I, I love the idea of him getting sent to the future, and I love the oh, the doors that that would open for the franchise. But I also really think the ending they shoot with him back at the S Mart, yes. and uh, and Ted Raimi as his like weird coworker, <laughs> and he's talking about, and he's just like boring everybody with his stories about how he was in medieval times and could have been the king. Oh yeah, and all this shit. <laughs> Everybody's had that sudden, coworker. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then all of a sudden, all hell breaks loose, and he just goes to the gun section and starts shooting people. Like I think it's an amazing ending. It's such a good, like it's such a better ending than the movie. I mean, I I I don't hate the original ending, but I love the one that they went with so much more. Uh, I'm with you on that. I think it's an amazing ending, and um, and uh, and also I just have such a soft spot in my heart for movies that like have a surprise action sequence after the story's over. Yeah. I love that yeah. shit. 
Um, and yeah, but yeah, taking him back to S Mart. S Mart is such a running thing through this movie that like ending it there is feels very appropriate. It's a nice yeah. set too. They 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 dress the S Mart set very well. I think. Uh, yeah. Oh. Oh my God! One of my favorite, one of my favorite quotes of this movie that isn't even a real quote is when they're storming the castle and the guys are blowing up and Bad Ash, it like sees them blowing up and his reaction is like, oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I laugh every time. He's just so appalled. <laughs> he does, um, he's like apoplectic. He doesn't even know what to do. Yeah, this is the best. Bruce Campbell stuff is the the yeah. evil evil Ash leading the army of the yeah. yeah he is good um Paul didn't you say you had a funny story about this scene that's about to happen it's like around this part of the movie yeah but so like at the last Bruce fest or it wasn't the last it was the one before that because I work on a, a Bruce Campbell uh, fan festival called Bruce Fest where I actually play the CEO of S Mart I I brought it back into the uh, narrative because we nice. do an immersive nice. fun. anyway he was saying that during the sequence originally. Sam Raimi wanted to have a part where when they're being besieged by the deadites where Ash is like, uh, we need to make peace with them. And so, you know, and, and he's going to, he's like convincing all everyone at the castle, like we have to make peace. And so that it shows the, the castle gates open and Ash comes out with a bunch of children with like flowers and they're all singing and it shows all the skeletons being like, huh, <laughs> what? And then the skeletons kind of look at each other and they're like, charge. And they all start charging, and Ash runs back into the castle and shuts the gate. And then you just hear all the children getting slaughtered. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. So that was like, that's Sam Raimi's vision for this character. You know? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, even worse. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. I, this is a little bit name droppy of me, but I have to say it. Also, it's kind of relevant to the topic. I got to have dinner with Bruce Campbell at, at the last uh, Bruce Fest, just me and him and my uh, co-collaborator Selena that I do the immersive stuff with. And, uh, we talked about it's a mad, 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 mad world. Cause we both share a love of that movie and I'm happy to report. He's a super cool dude. Yeah, that's great. I believe it. I, that's I, not name dropping at all. That's exactly what this podcast is here for. Oh, good. <laughs> um, I've, I've always kind of thought he'd be like a fun person to like kick it with, like outside of, um, you know, doing acting and stuff he's super nice at yeah. the festival he's in his persona like he does the ash persona and he's just kind of insulting everyone all the time <laughs> um so you know a lot of the time i i feel like he thinks i'm an idiot but like at that dinner he wasn't doing that and i was like oh no he's like just a, a really cool dude i mean even when he's insulting everyone i love him you know <laughs> Yeah, he seems like a he seems like a good hang. Yeah, I, they say never meet your heroes, but he really has been one of mine for uh, since I was a kid, and uh, and and it worked out. It was actually a good experience meeting him. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. you know, we talked about like uh, what could his career have been, but honestly, he had a pretty good career for like your. I he should say he has a it. pretty good. Yeah, he has a pretty good career. He's still working. Yeah, but like he's definitely you know for a guy from Detroit who you know started making movies with a bunch of friends he's done really well for himself and he's had so many like iconic obviously this is his most iconic role but he's had these sort of memorable roles in a lot of different things and you know created sort of this weird career that yeah you could look at like what he could have been or what could have happened but you could also just look at like shit this really went well for him you know well, and another thing about Bruce Campbell is, I mean, can you think of another actor who could do what he does as Ash or in a lot of these parts? I mean, there isn't one. Like, what he does is 100% unique to him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love all this front projected stuff that they do with, like, the skeletons running by. <laughs> like, every, <laughs> like, he just went hog wild with the effects on this. Like, every shot has something, you know? It's really cool. Oh, yeah. Tons of, like, a skeleton flying through the air from explosion somewhere and they're not just that. taking the easy way out like they're challenging themselves like what else can we do with these skeletons what else can like what other in-camera tricks can we do yeah it was funny watching some of the behind the scenes stuff of like how they were you know some of it was stop motion some of it was puppeteering some of it was like totally remote stuff some of it is obviously actors in suits and they just sort of cobbled it all together and it's like you can kind of tell, but it's really easy to lose yourself in like the 
you know, suspension oh, of disbelief. Oh, yeah, it looks super phony. It looks super phony in the way that all old movies doing this shit look super phony. But it's not like CGI looks always looks that realistic, you know? Yeah. It, you, there's always a suspension of disbelief. And what this has over, you know, something that's heavily CGI'd in post is it's very tactile, you know, like you can definitely tell that things are interacting and, you know, I don't know. It's, it's different, but it's also like very valid. Yeah. Well, it's also, it's phony, but it's phony in so many different ways. And it's all coming at you so fast that at a certain point you just, there's no point in thinking about the fact that it's fake. You know, you've got guys in suits and then you've got stop motion skeletons and then you've got skeletons that is just like, there's somebody off camera, like holding it, <laughs> like you know, yeah. and, um, but it's just, it, but you know, it's all just adding up to this battle that you just sort of default to believing, you know? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. The car one, one, line from this movie that never gets quoted that's one of my favorite is when the skeletons see him in the death coaster and one of them is like let's get the hell out of here <laughs> like, <laughs> i love that i love that yeah i love that. i love this whole sequence this yeah. is wonderful what and i love the the fast motion when the when when uh what's her name's trying to stab him with a thing and it's like they're both being ramped up it's just like so over the top she's trying to stab him with a spear and he keeps on rolling out of the way <laughs> <laughs> what makes the big spinny thing on the front go is that is that the internal combustion engine or do they build like steam, a separate steam power oh that's no the no steam it's, power. it's yeah, steam right, powered okay. now oh, yeah, that's he oh that's on, he had a book on steam power in his trunk for some reason <laughs> that's why he's got his, that's along why, with his chemistry textbook <laughs> and his fangoria that's why he's got like the steam exhaust pipe there yeah, behind exactly. him it's, <laughs> it, it makes like a choo-choo sound if i'm not mistaken <laughs> funny Oh, man. You know, another thing that I learned from working on Bruce Fest is that that car is literally in every Sam Raimi movie. Like, he he, oh, yeah. he put a wagon on the chassis for Quick and the Dead, and he has it, like, disassembled on the walls of the guy's shop in uh, the Oz the Great and Powerful. Mm. I didn't realize that he had done, gone that far, you know? Yeah, yeah he's committed crazy. to that shit. Yeah. That's awesome. It was pretty I, cool. That's, like, I think that's really cool. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how else to say it. He reminds me, Sam Raimi. I mean, this this movie especially feels like when I watch it, a bunch of friends. Someone gave them eleven million dollars <laughs> to make a movie, and like they have been just toiling with like you know the cheap shit like for years, and now they finally get to like make their dream movie, and that's what this feels like. And they got their best friend as the star, and like it's well known that Sam Raimi like is wants to punish him. Like he just wants him to do 37 <laughs> takes of like getting punched in the face or whatever this. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, apparently they were, they were throwing styrofoam rocks at him in the opening scene when he's walking in the stockades to like doing the, the March of shame there. And Sam Raimi started throwing potatoes at him instead of styrofoam <laughs> rocks just to keep him on his toes well yeah i mean i've 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 you know it's i think famously said in many places that like anytime you see something come flying off screen and hit ash in a sam raimi movie sam raimi probably threw it yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. you know another You're right though could sorry no I go ahead gonna, i was gonna change. yeah no i was just gonna say to what matt was saying this seems like a, a movie that like you, you like when you were in high school and you're like, oh, we should all get together and make movies together and, you know, whatever you make these plans with friends. And, it, you know, obviously we all grow up and those plans get dashed against the rocks of reality. <laughs> um, but like it is one of these and and I've, you know, in film school, this was everyone had like this dream of of graduating and making their movie with their friends. And a lot of them were like these self-indulgent, stupid things most of us don't get to do this, but like certain people like uh, Kevin Smith and Sam Raimi make these silly self-indulgent movies with their friends over and over again. And it's kind of like, they're not always great, but you know, I, I don't, I can't really knock it because who wouldn't say yes to that? If you could, if you could manage a way to do it, you know? Yeah, totally. It's the dream. They're living the dream. And and just the fact that Sam Raimi like d- puts you know the the car in every movie is like it's like a little reminder of like I'm still doing that you know even though I'm making these huge like three hundred million dollar you know uh, Spider Man three or um, Doctor Strange or whatever like I'm still gonna find a way to get my little personal touch in there you know yeah it's such like a silly thing to hold on to that there had to be so many times when people were like, just dude, just let it go. You know, like it's, <laughs> it was cute, but you know, it's dumb. Just grow up. And he just insists on like, there's some people that just are like, Nope, this is my thing. I'm doing it. 
Yeah, if you if you go against it, you get run over by the car. No. <laughs> so um, it's he, he, worked for him so far. Yeah. <laughs> One thing I uh, it, part of Sam Raimi's original vision for this scene where. He, Ash is storming the parapet was that it was going to be one uninterrupted take for like, I don't remember some insane, like five minute section of the movie. Wow. <laughs> they wound up not being able to do that. It was too much. That sounds insanely ambitious, especially for like the, the way it seems like Sam Raimi shoots, which is a lot of chaos and a lot of like random shit going on. Like what I think of Sam Raimi and from what I've heard of like the way these movies are shot, it's not like, Oh, really precise and you know perfectly choreographed moments it's more like oh i hope somebody doesn't get killed in this scene you know like let's just let all hell break loose and we'll shoot it with three cameras and hope it works out um yeah i mean mean, these definitely the sword fights here are pretty choreographed there was there's one shot where he's fighting like three deadites and um none of them are actually there he's doing it in front of a green screen and so they did have to like uh some of this stuff uh you know they really blocked it out like a dance yeah, yeah, I've heard that that was the biggest difficulty was he had to remember like they had this numerical system for who he had to be fighting and what he what moves he had to do at certain times because so many of his people that he was supposed to be fighting and stabbing were not actually there. Yeah. Uh, we're just <clears throat> we're just, watching yeah, the we're just climactic in now. battle here. Hey? Yeah, <laughs> which is him fighting himself, which is easy to forget, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um you know, another thing, like as long as we're all just entranced by this battle that I think should be said about this movie is it's, to me, one of the all-time great soundtracks. If you enjoy movie score and especially medieval movie score, you really can't do much better than the Army of Darkness soundtrack. It has the same kind of seriousness that Embeth Davids does. I mean, it's, well, no, it's playful in places, but it's an amazing soundtrack. The March of the Dead, when they're coming up, is Danny Elfman. The rest of it is Joseph LaDuca, who's done the other Evil Dead movies, and he's had an amazing career since then, too. He's done so much stuff, but uh, I freaking love this soundtrack. All right, let's stop right there. Should we pause, too? Um, oh, yeah. yeah, I'll pause. I'm pausing, I'm pausing. High dynamic range, ultra HD, Blu-ray, 4K. <laughs> he looks like he's, like, scared. did i send you a message you know because i'm i texted him. oh yeah did he finish his thought yes but wait let's clap oh, let's clap before we forget okay ready one two yeah. three one two three okay <laughs> um technology so yeah hit play <clears throat> well someone could just jump in uh, I love the um. I like the, one of my favorite things in this movie is that they have the, when he when he burns his when he burns Bad Ash's face off and throws him over the tower and then he climbs back up and he's a skeleton. You actually get the the poster for Evil Dead Two, which is the skeleton with the human eyeballs in it. Oh yeah, which doesn't yeah. actually happen in that movie at all. But the Bad Ash coming back to fight him as a skeleton has the eyeballs in the skull and i think it's really cool and they do a nice job with that they even have it like when he punches him the eyeballs roll in his head like a slot machine like a cartoon yeah the slot machine thing is is a cartoon classic yeah yeah Yeah, i think if you like told someone to watch this movie and just up front were like yeah it's it's a live action cartoon that would like really help people (laughs) understanding the tone and like what this is that they're getting into the live action horror cartoon. This is one of those movies that you're tempted to tell someone to watch it and just try to like not tell them anything about it. (laughs) You know? (laughs) Yeah. Like just absorb it and see what you think. (laughs) Just, just don't say what's going to happen and just see if they understand. Cause eventually they probably will, but, there's going to be like a little moment of confusion in there, maybe. You know? Oh, for sure. <laughs> yes. There's a lot of confusing elements about this. <clears throat> um. All right. Should we, we did top four. I don't know. Should we just summarize our thoughts at this point? I think we could. We're very near the end, which we've already talked about. I'm not sure I understand my own thoughts. 
I mean, this. Yeah, I, well, if you don't, then that's pretty much <laughs> we're all we're, we're fucked. Oh, I mean, we've we've talked. To, I, in a way, we I feel like we've been summarizing our thoughts this whole time. You know, we've yeah. really been digging into the meat of what this movie is since we started watching it. And I don't have a lot more to say other than I really think this is probably one of my all time favorite movies. I mean, it's just. It just makes me feel so warm inside. <laughs> like, it's just so fucking great in so many ways. And uh, yeah, I have nothing to add. Um, well, we have to rate this from 1 to 10, Timothy Dolphins. So uh, would you like to assign it a number? Oh, the Timothy Dolphins. Um, yeah, the hell with it. I mean, I'll give it, um, you know, it's Army of Darkness, man. I mean, I'm highly, highly biased, but I'm giving it 10 Timothy Daltons. This movie's amazing. All right. Um, wow. I'll go next and I'll That's be quick. High praise. Yeah. Uh, this is, I love this movie and it's such a, as we said before, it's hard to find an equivalent movie that has the same like weird tone and attacks these same genres. And oh, okay. it's kind yeah. of a, this is sorry. We're at, we're at the scene now that I, that I was looking for where she like loses the evil and she becomes like a, a woman again. They yeah. Her cool, like a cool color effect where yeah. the, her coloring comes back. Yeah. She's not pale anymore. Yeah. She's, she's got a color back. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, just because all the evil blood is out of her and all the good blood is in her. Yeah, that's um, not what you guys were like. She just uh, shows up later. <laughs> I, I, I totally no, forgot. no, no. <laughs> I thought the question was, wh- what is like? Does he kill her? And yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. no, he throws her over the. Yeah, I mean, the question was kind of like all of it, but I totally yeah. forgot that moment was in there where she where her color returns to normal. I completely forgot <laughs> yeah, that. So happened. All we're like, I think she just shows up. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, no, this movie is a unicorn, and it is totally way too goofy for me normally but i have so much affection for it and just the just the the whole character of ash in this movie i think is like the climax of what we've sort of been developing in this evil dead franchise and uh also you should watch the evil dead series matt it is really more of the same and very enjoyable um yeah i'm gonna give this I'll give this a nine. I really like so much of this. This just everything about this makes sense. There's very few flaws in this for what it is. So uh, that's nine Timothy Dolphins from you. Nine Timothy Dolphins. Wow. Wow. Harris went big. Everyone's going big. Yeah, I'll go. All right. Yeah. Um, I think Harris said it best. This movie's a unicorn. Like this is this is something uh Something you, something rare that you just you just don't get to see every day, unless you you know buy a copy of it and watch it every day, like, and then watch it every day with your daughter, like Harris's ex or whatever. <laughs> By the way, she sounds like a keeper to me. Yeah, I, 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 love, I love that like little detail in the story. Like, what? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, you got to find ways to spend time with your kids. Um. I guess. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to give it a nine. Nine Timothy Dolphin. Wow. It's going to be a high rank. Matt, it really doesn't matter what you do. This is going to be a high rank. Yeah. yeah. You can't tank it. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I was going to give it an eight, but I feel like a fool now. I don't know. <laughs> Step it up. Too low. You got to give it that extra one, man. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I really enjoy it. I feel like uh, there's multiple viewings in my future. Um, and uh, I was a little high when I watched it last night. And so <laughs> <laughs> maybe I need to watch it uh, clear headed or something. I don't know. No, but I think high should help. <laughs> it did. I really, I really dug it. Oh, my God. I forgot all about when he throws his gun up to himself and he's yeah. riding the little, the little cart across the that's the That's the best part of the S-Mart thing. There's yeah, no reason is. to throw the it gun is. up in the air no, at all. No reason. At it's all. Amazing. It's all style. He's he's now developed such a he, – he's so committed to being Ash. He's so self-aware yep. that he's in Ash's world that he's that's now right. adding style to his shooting of the <laughs> deadites. <laughs> oh, you know, and this girl that he works with, or is she a customer rather? Um, yes. Do you know who she is or where she's from? Isn't she in like no. Mars Attacks or something like that? She's the girlfriend. She's Adam Sandler's girlfriend in The Wedding Singer. Oh, that's right. Oh, shit. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not Drew Barrymore. Oh, God. Not Drew Barrymore. Man, that movie's good. Yeah. I love that movie. Oh, my God. Amazing. It has John Lovitz in it, you know? That yeah, that's great. the ticket. <laughs> um, all right, so it's on me. Uh, okay, I will summarize my thoughts. I guess I'm giving this a nine. Um, 
I, I really dug it. Um, I mean, everything about it. I love all the practical effects. I love the, the it's clear that they love these effects. You know, they're having fun doing it. This is just like a showpiece for them to say like, hey, look what we can do. You know, no one else is making movies like this. Sam Raimi is like still trying to make movies like this, you know, and he brings like his uh, his love of this sort of thing to every even the like big budget movies that he makes now. I mean, this is it's just great. It's just fun, campy, like silly. You know, it's really like who is this movie really for kids or like teenagers? <laughs> it's, this is why it's a unicorn. And this is why it reminds me of The Princess Bride is like, who is the fucking target audience? I have no idea. Yeah. Like uh, us, you know, but you but us and a bunch of other people. You I know? mean, I really when you get down to it, and this is why I love Sam Raimi as a filmmaker. I really feel like the target audience for this movie movie is Sam Raimi. Yeah. You know, yeah, I mean, yeah. that's the thing. He just he just does whatever the fuck he wants. <laughs> and you just get, I mean, that's the and that's what I think most great filmmakers do, and just hope that somebody else is into it. I love his he was cool wearing outfit. a costume under his S mark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's and he's got like the he like still has the, the metal hand. <laughs> the he's, armor. Yeah, he's got the metal hand. He's got like the the cowboy shirt, the like the old fashioned John Wayne Western. You know, it's like they're really trying to turn shirt, him yeah. into like a, an action hero. Like there could be more yeah. Ash movies. He's but, got the cool and then outfit. he puts the he puts the uh, Winchester rifle into an enormous hip holster. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which he's been wearing. God, I, this makes yeah, me want to go home and, and continue the story and watch Ash vs. the Evil Dead again. I've been meaning to oh rewatch that. I, yeah. love, I love that the scene starts with him saying, my place is here at the s <laughs> <laughs> I guess oh. so. Dude, do, 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 do you guys want to hear something crazy? Uh, hold up. Nine Timothy Dolphins. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I well, f- first of all, I'm I'm just so happy that uh, this movie rated so highly here on License to Watch. Uh, I j- I just think that's awesome. But no, the uh, the chainsaw that he uses in this movie is in my fucking apartment right now. Oh what? really? Yeah. What? Yeah. After the last, we, we got a lot. We got a hold of a lot of original props for the last Bruce Fest, and it has fallen to me to safeguard this thing until we're able to get it back to where it needs to go. So. It's just like in my apartment. Uh, the Smithsonian? That's awesome. I know, right? I know. It's like, <laughs> yeah. I, I, by the I'm, time... And you didn't bring it here tonight? I, dude, I thought about it, but like, are you kidding? I can't deal with that kind of responsibility. Like, I'm, I wish I'm, it wasn't there. I'm, I'm like, immediately concerned about the security at your place. Like, what if, <laughs> Well, yeah. I mean, the only thing, nobody knows it's there, which oh, is yeah. why maybe well, you should cut... I'm immediately concerned that I might have to steal it now. <laughs> yeah, but you don't know where I live. I don't know. Like, by the time this airs, I don't think it'll be there anymore because we're going to return All it really right. soon. But um, yeah, no, it's just, it's like this mind-blowing weird thing i did take pictures with it of course you know oh yeah, yeah. Well, you have to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. amazing amazing you have to take a picture of it when you get home tonight and send it to us on the yeah, group should. text yeah. Uh, yeah well it's all wrapped up right now you know uh, what i mean like unwrapping it to take a picture would take like a half hour and then i'd have to go buy a bunch <laughs> of bubble wrap and masking tape again <laughs> um i can i can i can show you the picture i took right now i can i can send that on the group text that's right acceptable yeah. yeah this is going to be really good uh, really <laughs> yeah. good Really good audio. Really good pod. Yeah. Like you guys can talk about yeah, something yeah, else really while I look it up. Yeah, the best audio yeah. is people looking at pictures. Yeah. Everyone knows that. Everyone I, knows that. I see the photograph you are showing me. Exciting. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, he's well, he's looking that up. Uh, you know, I'll say, uh, Paul, thanks for for coming on the show once again. Hey, thanks for having me. Hey, can I can I get in a plug real quick? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Well, number one for this any is plug time. Yeah. There's so there's these dudes that we worked with on uh, on Bruce Fest. Uh, they do a podcast called Cult of Campbell, and they've gone through and watched every Bruce Campbell thing possible, and then recorded podcasts about it. So if you're a Bruce fan and you like this kind of content, you should check them out. And then also my friend Kelly and I are doing a Last of Us podcast. Uh, and so, you know, we get our episodes up a day or two after the episodes come out and we're watching the season and talking about it and sharing our love of the franchise. It's called Fungus Among Us. Oh, so, that's great. Fi- yeah. Find us wherever you find your podcasts and uh, give a listen. And uh, I'll shout you. Y'all shout out license to watch on the next one, too. Awesome. Yeah, thanks. And uh, yeah, that last of us show is pretty good so far. You guys watching it? No, I'm not. I'm not. I can't watch it episode to episode. I gotta wait until there's a few of them up. Oh man. I uh I had it recommended, but my my old roommate, he used to play Last of Us a lot and he used to just play video games a lot with like a lot of shooting in them for like hours on end when <laughs> I when I could like only hear gunfire in my room for like long periods of time. 
So I just need to like wait on Last of Us a little bit. <laughs> You're still burned by this. <laughs> yeah. Still traumatized. That was a really good that that game, that video game is a really good story. I I yeah. honestly there's a part of me that just hopes they don't stick too religiously to the video game story because I remember it so specifically that I feel like Yeah, I watched a lot surprise. of the cutscenes, but then the gunfire comes back in like immediately. <laughs> I mean, so far, I felt like they're doing a really wonderful job of sort of weaving in and out of the video game narrative and then adding new stuff or like it's a, it's a pretty amazing adaptation so far in the terms of the balance it's striking. It's, um, yeah, I've heard nothing but good things. So what's the, what's that guy's name? Um, Pedro Pascal. Yeah, Pedro Pascal. So is there a there's like a baby Yoda in it then, right? Uh, the yeah, baby but... Yoda is a is a full grown human female. Well, she's yeah. not full grown. She's fourteen years old. Baby Yoda is a fourteen year old <laughs> girl. Yeah, that's pretty f- full grown. I mean, in one sense, I suppose. In another, more accurate sense, it's juvenile. <laughs> in another but... much more accurate <laughs> sense, yeah. Well, that's true. No, that's fair. <laughs> but not a baby. She's not a baby. She's not a baby. That's true. Yeah, She's not a baby not in the baby. way that the Yoda was. What, if, what if they get desperate and they just put like a Yoda in there? <laughs> I'm kind of hoping for that. Yeah. That, yeah, that would be a good twist. That would be a good deviation from the plot of the game. Is like, hey guys, <laughs> there's Yodas in this. There's Yodas and shit in this. Yeah. Um, but it, they have to differentiate it from the actual Star Wars Yoda. Like, you mean it's like not Star Wars Yoda? It's like just a Yoda-like creature. It's like it's like yogurt from a, from a, from. A, <laughs> From space a Wars. non-Star Wars Yoda. Yeah. <laughs> what is a non-Star Wars Yoda? It's Yoda. Nope. My name's Yodel. Get yeah, it right. Exactly. <laughs> Merchandising. I'm Swiss. <laughs> Merchandising. Just Moichendizing. plain yogurt. Just plain yogurt. <laughs> I love this at uh, the end. When in Hollywood, visit Universal Studios. It's like an old-fashioned like uh, illustration. I've never seen that shit before. Yeah, yeah I don't think that, that, was, that wasn't on my DVD. I don't think that was pretty cool. Well, thanks for having me on the show, guys. I was so excited to be part of this. I, I love this movie. Yeah, yeah. of course. Thanks for coming, and we'll have you on Thank again you. soon, I'm sure. Hit me up. Um, all right, so I'm going to play the intro, uh, the outro music, and uh, this is kind of the end of the show, guys. It's how we end shows. Well, good now. ending, Matt. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I want to say thanks to our guest, Paul Jones, and uh, thanks to Chris Morocco for creating the remix that we're listening to right now. Um, and yeah, up next we have the Evil Dead, or it's just called Evil Dead, the 2013 reboot, re- sequel, requel, what are we calling this thing? Requel? Is yeah. it reek that bad? No. <laughs> um, yeah, so we'll be doing that Legas, next. Lego sequel? Lego sequel, that's it. Um, and then they made it, they made it in Legos? <laughs> and then Colin will be announcing our next uh, franchise. You want to announce if he it ever right fucking now, picks no, it. You, you <laughs> There's wait no way I'm going to announce it right now. All right, he's going to wait. He's going to wait. He's yeah, going to surprise us. I'm going to surprise myself. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we have a Patreon. If you go to www.patreon.com slash L2W, uh, we put out a new show every month where we cover non-franchise classics such as... Guys, what have we done? Dark Man. Man. Who? Dark Man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not tired. I'm fine. <laughs> Yeah, for this series, we've got Dark Man. Um, what else have we done recently? Why can't I ever think of them off the top of my head? I know we've Quick done Cliffhanger. That was an, that's an old one. Cliffhanger? <laughs> like over a year Scarface. ago. Scarface. Scarface is yeah. a great old one. Scarface, yeah. Scarface. We've done that. More classics. Um, yeah. Uh, can't Hardly Wait. Oh, yeah. And, and oh, we, did, we did Go too. recently. I think that did was we do the Go. Oh, Go the was good, Club too. too yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. So we, so you get a lot of fun stuff like that that we can barely remember. It's clearly very memorable material. Um, for just one dollar a month, and that website again is www.patreon.com/l2w. Letter L, number two, letter W. Um, yeah. So that's the end of our show. I think I got everything, and uh, we'll see you next time for Evil Dead 2013. Hail to the king, baby. Groovy. Hail to the king, baby. Hail to the king, baby. <laughs>